let's move a little bit to talk about the supply chain. This is where it gets a little important to, to tell everyone that I'm, I'm not an economist. Um, I do spend the, the, the volume of my work in speaking with vendors, um, speaking with employees, speaking with many people throughout the supply chain. And I suppose that gives me a little bit of insight to maybe I can give you what are some of the more common things I talk about. Um, so what I do today is talk about some of those terms. Um, again, I, I, I can't convince you one way or the other what business initiatives fit in your particular business plan, but hopefully some of this insight might uh, make some light bulbs go off over your head. When we first came into Ohio, we talked about, and it's been widely publicized, about the higher value of local, the use of local, it absolutely is the focus of ours. But when you, when you start out with companies like Chesapeake and some of these are larger operators, and even some of the larger oil mm -hmm. service companies, the reality is that, that we and they have really what I call a global to local supply chain. Um, speaking specifically for Ohio in this area, you uh, are, have the benefit of, of living in an area that has a, a great resource beneath your soil. The best way for you to produce that resource and to create positive economic impact is to attract people that know how to, do, who to produce that, to know how to produce that for you. You need to look at a global level, at a national level, and that's why Chesapeake was able to be attracted to this area, because you have a resource that we have specific expertise into. So it's only natural that Chesapeake is going to pull some of our resources. Us, we came from Oklahoma City, we set up a field office here. Many of the large oil field service companies are either worldwide or national. So those people you know, should be welcome here. We really need some of that expertise to help produce these resources. On the national level, uh, when you move to some of the uh, oil field service companies, um, the supply chain, some of those things, we'll talk about that in the next slide, about um, you know, which companies, we, where you fit in the supply chain. Uh, on the national level, again, you're going to have some national companies coming in I think, um, that will help this area, help produce those resources. But my specific task, my focus is, is to help educate people at a regional and a local level on where they can fit into that supply chain. So here's some examples of, and I just put a couple on this slide as a general. When, when you're identifying where you want to compete for, for the operation, you know, the EMP companies, the, the financing, the joint ventures, we, we really look, um, I, I get some phone calls quite a bit, and I, hate, I don't want to say all that industries, but uh, to, to insurance or to, to a lot of the banking industries. You know, they really educated themselves a lot about in the past, and hopefully we helped do that about where they fit in the supply chain. But the reality is, Chesapeake's probably not the best um, focus of the individual branch of downtown Canton for Chesapeake's global financing. You know, a lot of times those resources will come to us. We, we, we look for those resources on a global level. The financing partners, joint ventures, we won't just look locally, we look globally for them. We look for technologies all over the world. We look for oil field service companies all over the world. And obviously we look to sell, to sell our produced resources all over the world, not just locally. But as we move toward what does impact you locally, let's look at the national level. We'll still look for some capital investment at the national level. Um, last year, in the early stages, we probably looked to the national market for some of our senior management, that is, some of which has moved in to the area. I've said many times in, um, in previous discussions about uh, Tim Cummings as our operations manager for the Utica. Uh, he's spent his whole career drilling all over the world, um, nationally, internationally. He's moved here, and I think uh, somebody just told me recently they saw him on the, or they saw an announcement, he just bought his home in downtown Canton, uh, or in the Canton area. And this <coughs> is a better place with Tim here. He's gonna train a lot of people. Um, so that first stage, we, we did look nationally to bring some experienced talent into the area. Oil field service companies, uh, Superior, uh, Schlumberger, Baker Hughes, these are companies that we really need to attract in this area because they have specific expertise that is going to trickle down to all of our businesses. Technology, science, professional services. Now is where it gets a little bit more interesting for us. At a regional level, uh, that's when we'll start looking for maybe our middle level management. Maybe we have some people that worked in West Virginia, or the, or the Marcellus. Ryan Dean works with me in, in corporate development is a good example. Uh, he's a New Camp resident. If you want to raise your hand there, Ryan. So I'll 
uh, moved to Canada about a year ago. Uh, again, I'd like to say Canada's a better place because Brian's here too. He's bringing a lot of expertise from the industry for our company. Um, and he's helping train, certainly myself, and Amy's others in the area. Uh, indirect resource, we're going to talk a little bit about that in, a little, uh, in the next few slides. Experienced labor. The local beneficiaries, landowners, you, we certainly are looking for land locally. That's where it all starts. We lease about 1.4 million acres. We're still looking, and others are as well. The natural resource management. We're still looking for labor here. We did a job there uh, last week, which many of you probably read in the paper. Uh, it was overwhelming, not just to us, but also to those that showed up. We had over 1,200 people show up to a job fair we did uh, last week. We're actively looking for, for more than 100 people. Many of those are with our oil field service companies, but we are actively looking for local talent. I forget the exact numbers. It's somewhere between two and 300 um, employees that we have throughout Ohio right now. About the first 40 or 50 or so probably came in, but the, the bulk of the recent hires have all come from Ohio. Myself, Andy, and many others in our, in our project. Training later, indirect resources, and induced resources. We're going to talk about those here next. When I started preparing to, to, to talk to some people about where you can benefit, this is one of those terminologies I think it's important that we start using some common language. And whenever you talk about the benefits, a lot of the studies, or this study, um, that come out, they talk a lot about direct, indirect, and induced impact to the community. Um, those are key terms, I think, in identifying where you're going to fit, where you have the biggest opportunity. When you talk about 